Welcome to the Landcare in Action stream of the National Landcare Conference 2021. My name is Andrew Scott, Bush Care Officer for North Sydney Council. This session is titled the Gondwana Link Connections Art Program. Uh, I'd like to ask you if you have questions, can you please enter them in the text box to the side of your screen uh, during the presentation? as we'll have a limited amount of time at the end of the presentation to, to answer questions. Uh, without further ado, I would like to introduce our guest uh, speaker, Basil Scher. Uh, Basil, can you please start your presentation now? Good morning, Andrew, and good morning, all the listeners. It's a privilege and an honor to be talking to the conference. And um, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking on Noongar land, and would like to pay respects to, to Noongar elders, past, present and emerging. A little bit firstly about myself. Um, I grew up in Zimbabwe on a farm, came to Australia with my, my parents, brought us out when I was 18. And I've, but I've lived here for the last um, four decades. And during that time, I've seen my passion and, and vocation as being an environmental um, carer as well as community development. Today I'd like to talk about the Gondwana Link programs, art program. So I'll introduce what Gondwana Link is and then talk about the role of community art programs in helping um, enhance the value of this landscape scale conservation program. So um, the title is called Giant Paintings Mapping Special Country and it's about how we can, as land care practitioners, can use art to enhance the value of the work we do both on the land and in the communities we live in. Firstly, a map of the Gondwana Link area. Um, as I mentioned, I'm based in southwestern Western Australia, and the map um, you can see in front of you shows a great arc of country on the south coast, in, stretching all the way from Margaret River into the great western woodlands around Kalgoorlie. It's a thousand kilometers of landscape and um, much of it is still intact with national parks, state forest, um, nature reserves and um, large areas of remnant vegetation left in the agricultural area. So um, it's been going 20 years now, this vision of Gondwana Link and the aim of it is to reconnect habitat across this thousand kilometers of landscape how we can connect bushland um, and restore healthy landscapes across this area. To the right is a map of the area of the central part of Gondwana Link um, around the Stirling Ranges. Um, and that's the work inland of, of Albany and Denmark where I, I um, live. So um, firstly, what is Gondwana Link? Um, there is a coordinating organization that helps bring together the work of many groups across that whole arc of country. Its role is to facilitate, inspire, and involve groups and individuals in managing the bushland and natural landscapes of the area, as well as undertaking large-scale works that help connect and restore healthy country. Um, there's groups like Greening Australia, Bush Heritage, the Nature Conservancy, the Wilderness Society, as well as many land care groups, Aboriginal organizations, farmers, and community groups. So it's a, I would like to see it as a network of, of, of a group of, um, a network of, of groups that see, that are part of the family of, of organizations working towards this long-term vision. Um, so the, this, Picture here is of Chirininup Bush Heritage property, east of the Stirling Range National Park inland of Albany. And it shows the mosaic of land uses and land types across the central part of Gondwana Link. Here we have a, a large privately owned bushland reserve and buffering it in the foreground are extensive areas of direct seeded revegetation. Now this landscape, which we've been focusing on for the last 20 years, provides um, the opportunity to help conserve 
a biodiversity hotspot. So we, we are privileged in the Southwest to have this treasure trove, but there are many threats, including past clearing, dieback disease, feral animals and the like. And it's, there's a lot of activities like um, planning, um, large scale feral animal control, revegetation, citizen science, monitoring and environmental survey work that's happening in this landscape. Um, what I'll be focusing is on the contribution of community arts and um, artists in helping spread the vision and intention of the Gondwana Link vision. Um, so a lot of the um, artworks I'm showing are, are form part of specific community art programs over the last 10 years. This is a canvas prepared by two artists, Lynn and Ken Tinley, which actually is the Southwest. So it's, um, it's a painting that hangs in the Gondwana Link office in Albany, and it's a backdrop to many meetings and planning that takes place, planning workshops, but it's, it's a vision of connected country and it expresses the three sections of Gondwana Link, the forest, the central agricultural region, and, and then the great Western woodlands. Um, the, the value of art um, in such a way is, is both to create a sense of place, and I hope to develop the point in this program that these artworks express a deep connection and bond of the practitioners of land care and eco-restoration to the land that they are custodians of. I'd like to mention also that um, in many of my slides are links to films and YouTube clips that give a lot more detail of the projects that expressed. We started 10 years ago focusing on photography. This is the Gondwana Panorama exhibition and we coordinated community photographers from across the region, taking photographs from vantage points, looking down on the landscape. Um, this exhibition has toured extensively in the Great Southern, but the photos within it have continued to bear fruit in being available to promote um, workshops and publications and reports ever since. So it's provided a treasure trove of resource for us to use in helping um, share with the broader public what it is that we value and what we're hoping to achieve. So after, yeah, so photography has been a crucial part of it, but then moving to commissioning these, these large scale paintings. Um, this one represents the area of around Wellstead, um, about 100 kilometers northeast of Albany, and it's called Tracks of Time, created by four artists associated with the Butter Factory Studios in Denmark. And it involves working with a, a local family, that's the Leighton family, um, who've been in the, the area um, a couple of generations. And it expresses a deep connection of both history um, landscape and understanding of the environment. The, the aerial photograph to the right shows the view of part of the land covered by the painting. Um, this, this slide shows the, the artists in their studios working on the painting. Um, and the, it's since they've finished it, it's it's exhibited, it's been exhibited in many times and now hangs in, um, again, Gondwana Link um, offices in Albany. And it's, it's an expression of this particular farming family and community's deep connection. The, this, the next um, slide shows a photo montage. Um, it's about a um, 1.8 meters by um, one and a half meters. It's, uh, it's a mixture of of both aerial photography and photographs and artwork captured in eco camps held in the Parongarups area. Um, and the, the photos around are aerial photos taken by from planes, but also by drones. Um, so this was several weekends of work that's gone into this, this work. It's called Seeing Like an Eagle and in a single image, it captures a whole range of viewpoints and multimedia. Um, associated with also are some Vimeo footage now um, captured um, and available in links, which illustrate the, 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 
the area, um, which is all um, the focus of intense Gondwana link eco restoration activities. Um, we've also run community arts programs on Balajup Farm in the Shire of Cranbrook. This is a, um, a farming family that's been in the area for four generations. Um, it's uh, mostly still vegetated and has a, a, a beautiful landscape of um, lakes, plantations, revegetation areas, and pasture and cropping area. Um, so in the past eight years, there's been a range of, of camps, photography, eco art, and the pictures um, beside the aerial photos show some of the, the activities that have happened. Um, this is one of our first projects where we've, we've built in that it would be a, a collaborative program between both Noongar um, and Wajala or non-Noongar Aboriginal artists. This photo shows um, another view of the farm and on the right, some of the artists working on um, their, their, the, the collaborative community pieces. It's, um, we've been fortunate to have distinguished artists like Carolyn Narkel um, doing, coming onto country and doing um, a perspective of the land based on the, the long tradition of Noongar landscape um, painting. Um, so the resulting works are these large scale canvases that actually map the, the country from the air, but express the, the vision and interest and hopes of the artists involved. Um, the the Narkel sisters actually are daughters of one of the most well-known of the Noongar artists, Bella Kelly, and the photo in the slide shows a large scale um, mural in the nearby town of Mount Barker. So, um, and the, the painting illustrated in the right-hand corner is, is one of the paintings created in our Gondwana eco camps um, done in the traditional Noongar landscape school of art. Um, we've also held workshops um, on the north side of the Stirling Ranges around Mount Trio. This is um, Koi Kitchenaraf is the Noongar name for the Stirling Ranges. And again, we've had this collaboration between Noongar and non-Aboriginal artists in creating large scale um, paintings that become community owned um, and illustrating the country scene on the aerial photographs on the left. These wonderful salt lakes um, in the, the basin in front, in the north side of the Stirling Range um, National Park. Um, over the past 10 years, Gondwana Link um, and Green Skills, who I work with, have been partnering with some of the Noongar custodians of land called Nauna, which is a Greening Australia property that's been in the process of being restored and is under the custodianship and management of Dr. of, of sorry, of um, Uncle Eugene Eads, yeah, shown in the left-hand corner. Um, playing music. And um, it's a wonderful site for the restoration and, um, of Noongar culture on land. Um, the photos on the right show some of the activities in the structures that have been created on the property. Um, and one can see from the aerial photo, the beginnings of the landscape being revegetated and restored. Um, this photo, the slide shows a, one of the large scale paintings um, created in the community arts program held at Nauna um, and shows an aerial view of the restoration and, and rehabilitation work with many, again, with a strong Noongar connection, um, but also involving the collaboration of, of um, Wajala or non-Aboriginal people. So this type of arts program is not only focusing on eco restoration, but represents um, reconciliation, a, a wonderful way of people coming together to share about culture um, and learn from each other. Um, this particular painting is the, the artists of Carly Batolo and Jackie Gale um, with input from Eugene and Errol Eads. Um, so what's interesting uh, at Now and Up and elsewhere is the creation of 
large scale landscape or land art where the revegetation patterns on the landscape represent important cultural symbols. This painting on the left by, you, by Errol Eads, Errol and Audrey Eads, symbolizes six large circles connected on landscape representing Nauna, um, as shown by the view on the right. And um, the, so we have here a painting which is also mirrors the restoration work on the ground. The left shows an exhibition of some of the large scale paintings at Naunap um, as part of a prior to a visit by Curtin University, who formed a strong relationship um, with Naunap. On the right is the um, Eads family working on design work on one of the at the meeting house, the meeting place at Naunap. So um, we have here art linking with. Um, both cultural um, programs and environmental programs. Over the past few years, as is happening in much of Australia, we've got the growth of Noongar Ranger programs. And um, this shows the Naunap Rangers planting an air, a, a former farm on the edge of the Sterling Ranges. And in this case, it's a design that they that they've come up with. It's a it's in the shape of a giant goanna or kada in the Noongar language. And um, this following photo show, is taken four years later and um, provided by Greening Australian and illustrates what this giant goanna looks like from the air. And it is simply, it's one of several of these large scale reveg land art projects that, that illustrate important totems to the Noongar families. About four minutes to go, Basil. Yeah, and this is a landscape painting by um, um, Errol Eads illustrating those art, those land art. Um, and these art pa pa paintings are used in many ways here as part of NADOC week, where we've got Dr. Richard Whaley, Wally talking about um, illustrating Noongar culture against the, the wonderful backdrop provided by these paintings. Um, last year, the State Wetland Conference had the Gondwana Connections Art Program exhibition behind it, again, adding considerable depth and interest um, to the conference. Um, they've also been used in primary school education. Here is Auntie Carol Pedersen um, talking to the Ongarup primary school students using art to illustrate connections to country and environment. A more recent development is public sculpture. And this is the first of what's to be a, a network of gene stream sculptures that honor Noongar culture, songlines, biodiversity, and the science of deep time. Um, I've included a link there so you can read a lot more about it. Um, but it's a very exciting initiative that again, is both reconciliation and a strong focus on eco restoration. Um, in addition to the, you know, across the towns of Gondwana Link, Gondwana Link, here there is a growth of murals. Here at the IGA Noangarup has um, sponsored a, a Malifal mural. Um, they are bordering the national park, so a wonderful focus on their local biodiversity. Um, we also have the form, um, the organisation form Silo Mural Trail Project and. A giant mural here on the silos of Ravensort, the grain silos, a, a wonderful acknowledgement by this community of their connection to country and the importance of local biodiversity. Um, associated with the paintings and art program is also a, a growth of local filmmaking and a recent documentary is called Breathing Life into Buja, um, an hour long documentary that, that covers what Gondwana Link stands for, but again, emphasizes the connection to country and, and with Noongar people and culture. So just to acknowledge the artists and support, um, we've had a wide range of funding bodies, groups and organizations be involved. And I can just re-emphasize the importance to all of us to include art um, as a wonderful way of getting our land care message out to a broader audience and engaging a groups of people both young and old that otherwise might not have become involved. So um, I, on that point, I'd like to um, thank the opportunity to talk about this and, and now, yeah, so 
I'll leave it at that and for discussion and questions. Thanks, Andrew. Oh, thanks, Basil, for that wonderful uh, presentation. We have a, a few questions coming through, but uh, just in case um, the audience isn't aware that Basil uh, was the winner of the Individual Land Carer Award last night. So uh, congratulations on that, Basil. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Andrew. Would you mind stopping your presentation now? And I will go to the question, we will go to the question and answer session. So, uh, just one sec. Um, yep, we've just got a call out there. Absolutely amazing, Basil. Thank you for your presentation from Annabelle Sides. Uh, Susan's wonderful artwork linking land care initiatives and Indigenous art. Thank you for sharing and seeing we cannot visit. Uh, also have um, also have a uh, question. Uh, um, what has been the highlight of the program, Basil? So um, for me personally, uh, um, it's been the ability to be involved on country with Noongar elders. So Gondwana Link started as an environmental program, but it's become much more than that. In fact, it's become um, part of reconciliation and helping yeah, and being part of this big movement um, to involve Noongar people in eco restoration and indeed follow their guidance. Um, so that's been the highlight for me is this, um, what I've learned and what I've gained from involvement with Noongar elders on country. Oh, fantastic. And another question, uh, what are the next steps? Uh, what does the future hold for your program? I think um, both for myself um, and Green Skills, as well as for the broader um, Gondwan link family of organizations as we see a vital role for art in our ongoing work. So we see a, a, that we want to involve all the creative industries and sectors in helping get the message out and how we expand and scale up our activities, generating the funds and enthusiasm and interest in, in carrying out our long-term vision. Uh, I'll just go to the last question here for you, Basil, uh, from Renee. Uh, McGlashan, uh, thank you for your insightful presentation, Basil. Uh, can you give us some tips on how to start up a similar Indigenous arts project to showcase our local regions and build meaningful relationships? Yes, well, it comes to building the personal friendships within your local community, with your um, local Indigenous families and, and elders. So um, in, in many ways, it's about trust building, and building links over a long period of time. But there's nothing more wonderful than getting out on country and yarning around a campfire. And from that, great visions come. Well, thank you, Basil. Thanks again. And and uh, and congratulations on that award last night. It, it, um, it's well earned. Uh, that's the end of the presentation. I'd like to say goodbye to you, Basil. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew, and everyone else. We'll now go on a short break before the next session. Please uh, choose the next session when you're ready.